What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Sweet. Such a hysteric birthday bash blind. In the last episode, a very, very interesting episode. Uh, Morishige and Yoshiki had quite the interaction. They dressed up in a wedding dress and a maid uniform with cat ears and had quite the encounter. However, Morishige just recently found out that such in or said encounter was broadcast to everyone that was uh, in the school, including Mayu. And as a result, he has lost himself and is out in the woods, presumably before he's going to die. Because because this is Corpse Party, right? <laughs> but anyways, Yoshiki is on the move to try to save him, I believe. But here, Morishige is saying, the woods, the woods are calling to me. After being seen by all my friends like that, and having the contents of my phone revealed to Kishinuma, there's there's nothing left for me. Shigeni, I never knew you were into that. Morishige, Morishige, honestly. Not only does Morishige wear women's clothes, he's also a total pervert. Not that he couldn't just, like, explain. And the other thing is, like, he has Yoshiki to back him up, right? So, I mean, I get it. When you're in one of these sorts of spirals where you're so intensely negative inside your own mental space... It can be really difficult to pull yourself out, and it can be difficult to stay reasonable in such a state as well. So it's not, you know, incomprehensible, but... No, no! That wasn't me! I was possessed by a spirit! You have to believe me! Honestly, he creeps me out. Right? I mean, we've all got fetishes, but that was some serious S&M. Sorry, but please don't show your face around here anymore. You know what Morishige could benefit from? <laughs> Would be some cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, I found it really helpful, uh, and just from also seeing patients in the hospital and stuff. It's so great to help turn, you know, these reactions. This is clearly Morishige responding to things that haven't even necessarily occurred yet. He hasn't even confirmed people's reactions to seeing everything. He hasn't even tried whether, tried to explain the situation. He's anticipating people's responses and their negativity, and then responding them to, responding to them with his own negativity. If only he could curb such negative thoughts um, of his own control. And that's exactly what cognitive behavioral therapy teaches. But regardless, come on, I'm telling you, that wasn't me. Why would I really be into that kind of thing? You know it's not true. Morishige, you shouldn't blame others for your own shortcomings. I'm not blaming others. I actually was possessed by a spirit. Come on, Mayu, you saw it all unfold. Tell them. You saw it all unfold, right? You were watching, Mayu, weren't you? Mayu ga mitete da to. You saw? Mayu? You saw? You said you saw? Yikes. So sa. Subete mirarete tan janai ka. なのに俺は何を取り繕おうとしてるんだ<笑> 
お笑いだな That's right, you saw it all. So why am I even bothering to try keeping up appearances? I'm. I'm such a fool. I don't even know what I'm doing, so I might as well just come right out and say it. <laughs> I participated in the escape room game so I could save Mayu, but during the course of it, Mayu saw me soliciting spankings while dressed as a maid. <laughs> it's all so ludicrous. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a comedy of errors, a true masterpiece of the absurd. That's true. That is, a, that is an apt description. Morishige, where are you? Answer me, please. It is very funny seeing him in the dress. Unfortunately, Yoshiki's voice seemed to just get swallowed up by the thick forest, where it faded into the darkness with no response. Morishige, answer me, darn it. How far could he have gone? Or is this forest basically just designed for people to get lost in it? If I recall correctly, it is one of those sorts of like endless forests when the main characters tried to explore it in the original Corpse Party. Like, there's nothing you can actually do to get out of it, per se, or there's no ending to the forest. But I'm sorry for fiddling with your phone, so please come out and let's talk. Morishige! It's a whole lot of silence. How far did he go? Yeah, to not even hear Yoshiki, and I can't imagine there's a lot of other noise going on. That picture, it makes no sense for you to be shocked by a photo of yourself in a maid outfit. I mean, did Yoshiki even really look at all the other pictures? Every single person in that auditorium has been forced to do things against their will by Sachiko. We all understand, believe me. Oh, Satoshi's able to communicate. Yoshiki, Yoshiki, can you hear me? A speaker somewhere nearby echoed forth with Satoshi's voice. Satoshi? 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 Oh, good, you can hear me. Did you get any clear idea where Morishige ran off to on your end? No, we're not getting any footage showing where he went. But more importantly, Yoshiki, I need you to listen to me carefully, okay? More importantly, aren't you worried about Morishige too? <laughs> of course, Yoshiki jumping to the accusation. Maybe Sach or maybe Sachiko's doing something else that Yoshiki's unaware of. Maybe Satoshi actually has more important information. There we go. <laughs> of course I am, but things on our end are even more dire right now. Huh? Dire how, exactly? Yikes. Wait, that heavy breathing, is that... <laughs> he says as if he's actually familiar with Ayumi's uh, heavy breathing. Wink. <laughs> Shinozaki. What? What happened to Shinozaki? She started hyperventilating so badly, she passed out. We haven't been able to rouse her either. Why the heck would that happen now? It's that darn Sachiko. She's trying to divvy us up and kill us one by one, isn't she? No, Yoshiki, that's not it. <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> it's the wedding dress you're wearing, Yoshiki. Apparently, it's an heirloom that's been handed down in her family for generations. Shinozaki was really looking forward to wearing it one day. <laughs> and so... Oh, Sachiko, you, you devious little mind. So... Morishige has obviously been targeted in that he was doing all these things in front of Mayu, etc. And from Yoshiki's perspective, it was just like, oh, I'll throw on this wedding dress and it's like not a huge deal. But now it's going to get to Yoshiki because it actually really hurt Ayumi to see Yoshiki in that wedding dress because she had been wanting to wear it all that time. And now Yoshiki is going to get super upset. And now he's going to be torn about what to do. So are you saying it's my fault she collapsed? <laughs> Shinozaki? Hey, Shinozaki! What? What? Satoshi, the class rep's not breathing. What do we do? Oh my goodness, you guys. It's admittedly a little bit hard to take this peril seriously in the moment. Big brother is Ayumi. Is Ayumi gonna die? Yikes. Shinozaki, hey! Shinozaki, say something, please! God, no. All I wanted to do was save her. All I wanted was to save Shinozaki. Why? Why did it have to come to this? Oh dear, poor little Ayumi is dead now, and it's all Kishinoma's fault. What? <laughs> so she's actually dead? Presumably? And she died from the emotional shock of seeing Yoshiki wearing the wedding dress she was so excited to wear. Just let that sink in for a moment. I can understand being incredibly upset. I can understand maybe even passing out from the emotional distress. But dying over the course of minutes? No. No, this can't be happening! <sighs> Wrong end. Brides have it tough end. Okay! So we finally got an ending, right? <laughs> new entry notes unlocked, or new entry unlocked in the notes in journal menu, victims, memoirs, B. Okay! So we got an ending. That's pretty cool, I guess. I'm shocked that we actually got a wrong ending. I thought our choices seemed pretty reasonable. And it seems like the game played out for quite a bit of time after we started on the route for the wrong ending. But with everybody who was dying, Morishige out in the woods and Seiko... Seiko probably dies anyways because this is Corpse Party, right? Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll go for more endings. I'm curious to see what the quick saves are, because there are multiple decision points where they said quick save, right? So the ones that say select, those are the ones where we make different choices, presumably. So I guess um, it would make the most sense to work our way back. Yeah, let's, uh, I guess let's do this. So we have the choice to exchange outfits, potentially. Now, would it make sense? So let's, let's just think for a second. Oh, I actually really appreciate that they show the option we chose in blue, so we know which one to choose. I like that quite a bit. Um, and if we are able to go back to each decision point with these auto quick saves, that will make life so much easier uh, for actually trying to get all these different endings, which would be really nice. So, if we don't, if we do exchange, Yoshiki is going to wear the maid outfit with cat ears, potentially get possessed, and Morishige is going to wear the wedding dress. And so, presumably, Ayumi may still die. 
Um, Morishige might not be as embarrassed, and Yoshiki might be... I don't... I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, okay. That would make me feel marginally better. I think each of them is a little bit more comfortable with the... That's right, each of them is more comfortable with the outfit that the other person had. Alright, let's switch then. And there we have it. Thanks, I don't think I could have possibly put this thing on by myself. Hey, I've got the same problem. Yeah, I guess he would. Yoshiki's gaze settled upon the cat ears left sitting on the desk. Do those count as part of the ensemble too? Well, whatever. The two of them began walking toward the exit. Are you sure you shouldn't be wearing those? We might not be able to continue unless you do. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, that's fine then. Though, shouldn't you at least take them with you just to be safe? I think it's reasonable. Even though it's only like 10 steps away. Mm, good idea. Hold up a sec. Thanks, but I'll go on ahead of you. You'll catch up soon enough regardless. There's no doubt another obstacle awaiting us wherever we go. What? Morishige is like, they exchange these dresses and then they're wearing them. And then Morishige is like, oh, you should, you know, go get the ears so that you don't have to walk all the way back to pick them up in case you're not allowed through the door. And then Yoshiki's like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. That would be more efficient to do that. And then Morishige's like, I'm actually going to go ahead of you while you go back to get the ears now, though. Because I'm going to try to get ahead, presumably. But by, like, maybe ten steps, <laughs> if that. that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> what? going to go next. <laughs> Morishige? What? Morishige? What the heck? What? Morishige had walked through a string of almost invisible yet razor sharp piano wire. After a moment of clear agony, his entire body split cleanly in two. What? Since when was there the piano wire? Wow. So supposedly there was piano wire, maybe it was placed there as a punishment for switching dresses or something like that, but... No, no more. I get the impression this isn't a good end either. Why? Why? Why do we have to be put through this? Why? Why did I have to see the look on your face as you died? This is so screwed up. Seeing you like... like this? I should have been the one to wear it. I should have worn it in your place. Wait, what? I don't know how that's the logical extension for, you know, being there, being the, or having the piano wire be there. Although suddenly now there's piano wire attacking Yoshiki. Darn it. What? What? So, all of a sudden, what? So I guess as punishment for wearing the wrong dress, each of them was met with a 
ill fate by piano wire? Yoshiki wasn't even presumably moving. He didn't even go into a new place, but the piano wire got to him somehow? Very interesting. Very interesting. Meanwhile, in the auditorium, the image of Yoshiki's torso, bisected by a similar trap to the one that killed Morishige, was proudly displayed on the TV, in living color. I'm surprised they didn't just jump to the wrong end screen there, because I'm fairly confident this is a wrong end. Nana, don't look! You either, Chihaya! Chills ran through Nana's body. This is too cruel. Far too cruel. Why are you making us watch this? Nana, don't bottle this up. I know you. I know how you always try to be strong, so don't worry about everyone else. Or, so to not worry everyone else. But you can't be okay after seeing something like that. Nari-chan, are, are we all going to die here? I'm actually, I'm quite surprised they zoomed in, or they like, you know, immediately went to these students as opposed to like, Ayumi, Satoshi, etc. Who would probably have more visceral reactions to both Morishige and Yoshiki dying in such a manner. And you, always with the negative gulp, or negative quip at a time like this, huh? How is that a proper response? <laughs> what? But... You think saying something like that is any help at all? Can't you see that Nana is way more disturbed by this than you are? Sorry. Thank you, Nari-chan, and thank you, Chihaya-chan. This is such a strange dynamic. I am in shock, but that boy's friends must have it even worse right now. That's true. Q switch over to them? There we go. <laughs> it's far too cruel. How could this happen? <gasps> it can't be true. Sachiko, <laughs> See, I believe you should always follow the rules. Always. That's no excuse. No excuse for this. We're all just pawns in Sachiko's game. For her to kill off as she <laughs> sees fit. It's okay, Yuka. I won't die. I promise. <laughs> this isn't good. Everyone's anxiety is shot through the roof. I need to keep myself together. Uh-oh. No! 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 <laughs> you can't escape it. Yuka always needs to be. <laughs> you just can't escape it, can you? Um, big brother, I, I need to go pee-pee. <laughs> Yuka, please. <laughs> Why is this your story art in every Corpse Party game? <laughs> uh, uh, huh? Oh, oh, you have to pee. Yeah, 
Oh, so is this is this the natural transition into chapter two where we follow Yuko's exploration around the halls or whatever to try to find a bathroom? <laughs> Dedicate an entire chapter to it, shall we? Hey, big brother, keep your voice down. Is this actually the right end? Sorry, how about I say I need to use the restroom and you come with me? Does that sound good? Well, okay. Sachiko! Sachiko! Yes? Where is the nearest restroom? Satoshi, what the heck? Don't you have any sense of the gravity of the situation? Now is not the time. <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. It's a biological function. Sorry, big brother, you got yelled at because of me. There are bathrooms in the back of the room. You can see them. It's those doors over there. Oh, those. But you can't possibly think I'm going to make it that easy for you. What? Am I going to wind up like Yoshiki and Morishige too? Don't worry, Yuka. I'll protect you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> hmm? Yuka-chan, you gotta go take a leak? <laughs> it's not me. Big Brother says he's scared to go alone. <laughs> well then, Big Bro, why not just step outside for a second and let her rip? <laughs> what a phrase. Huh? <laughs> That's what I did a little while ago. Easy peasy. It doesn't matter if it's easy, Satsuki-chan. That's really bad. Is it really, though, in such a situation? How come? How come? How can you ask that, Satsuki? You're in 8th grade. Yeah, but there's nobody out there, and everybody was all focused on the TV anyway. And it's sure a lot better than a bathroom that's probably full of crazy death traps, ain't it? That's the real kicker there. That's the real rationale. I guess, but still. Well, are you going or not? When you say those kinds of things, I get scared I can't bring myself to go. I really like that big part, or that part of you, big sister Yuka. You do? But I hate people like Kishinoma who don't do what I tell them. Is that why you killed him? I gave him a fighting chance, didn't I? But he and the glasses boy just wouldn't listen to what I told them. If only they'd played along with my fun games. So, for what it's worth, we did follow the rules the first time around, but that led to a wrong end. And so, us breaking the rules and getting both of us killed is now a different ending, that, which is actually seeming more and more like a right end, in that we've kind of moved on from Morishige and Kishiruma and, and Seiko as well, and are focusing now on Yuka's adventures. A momentary look of hatred passed over Sachigo's face, briefly interrupting her haughty, superior smile. That's why I objected to the ritual. This place and Sachiko herself aren't so easy to deal with. If you don't do things exactly the way you're told to, then you won't be able to do anything at all. 
That's the kind of foe we're dealing with here. It's frustrating, but I can't go against her wishes now. To do so would put Naomi, Yuka, and everyone else in harm's way. That makes sense. Satoshi, you're obedient, so I like you. Th thanks. I bet you'll show me what I want to see. That's not reassuring to hear at all. Huh? I told you, I want to see a romantic comedy. That's right, the whole harem thing. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't want to put one on for you, but we're missing a lot of actors now. If you put on a romantic comedy show for me, though, I can bring all the people who died back to life. What? Huh? So, Shigeni will be alive again? <laughs> uh-huh, you've all died countless times in here already, after all. It's real easy for me to bring you back. My, Sachiko, can you really perform such miracles? <laughs> I am like a god in this place. <clears throat> all I have to do is say, okay, back to starting positions, everybody, nice job, and everything will be right back the way it was. Wow, that's amazing. What the heck is Aiko thinking? Is what I'd like to ask right now, but honestly, I don't see what we have much choice but to do. Or I don't see that we have much choice but to do, as Sachiko says. Yep. Isn't there anything you can do about this Sachiko girl, Naho? Anything at all? I'd like to try exercising her, but she's not giving me a, even a moment's opportunity to do so. I really think we have no choice but to abide her. I mean, I can't get killed yet. I haven't even met up with Kibiki-sensei. Basically a god here, though, huh? That's a far cry from the usual evil spirits. Different level altogether. Quite. She's used her considerable power to create this otherworld fragment. With an accomplishment like that on her belt, God isn't far off. Challenging her head-on would be absolutely fruitless. Brute force cannot possibly overcome her. So, everybody's just going to go by the script then? I would think. Sachiko's about to, or Satoshi's basically saying, all right, I'll, I'll play, or I'll act in your play or whatever. And then Inumaru is like, I made it, go! Huh? Oh no, is that Inumaru? Sure sounds like it. Didn't we, didn't we already meet him? Oh my god. We just haven't heard from him in forever. So, Inumaru, of all people, has made it to the goal. Sayaka, were you watching? Did you see me? Not even for a second. And what the heck are you wearing? It's your favorite outfit to wear on days off from school. Don't you recognize it? How can you be so nonchalant about something like that, you stupid mutt? Oh, 
It's what I picked in the dress-up challenge. I had no choice. But don't worry. When we get out, I'll wash it and put it back in your bedroom bureau. <laughs> Keep your hands off other people's bureau. <laughs> what a word. Bureaus. <laughs> you creepy perv. So, I get to keep it, then? <laughs> Throw it out, or better yet, burn it till there's nothing left. What? But this was a birthday present from your mom last year. You love this outfit, don't you? How the heck do you know all that, you creep? I may have loved it once, but I sure don't anymore. I'll apologize to mom later. Understood, but please, let me apologize to her. I take full responsibility. This was all my fault. I can't allow you to take the blame for something you had nothing to do with. <laughs> I want to punch you so badly. You just come waltzing in here playing the gentleman without even remotely understanding how I feel. I really want to hit you. There, there. Calm down, Sayaka. Hmm? Thanks to Inumaru, the flow of conversation has come to a screeching halt, so that's something. Huh? She was right. Sachiko had been silent this whole time. She was just staring, mouth agape. <laughs> Absolutely dumbfounded. She's like, how did somebody actually make it to the end? And I'm shocked there even actually was an end. It seemed Inumaru's vitality, and more importantly his success, was beyond her wildest expectations. A living human made it to the goal. How? How? Because Haruyuki hasn't died here at all up till this point, and his lineage probably has something to do with it too, I think. But Sachiko, it's quite alright. Hmm? If you send him home as promised, I'm fairly certain it will result in dev or developments that please you. You really think so? I do. In fact, I give it my guarantee. If it proves otherwise, I'll even give back the spirit item you promised me. That's how sure I was. That's how sure I am. Wow, okay. I guess I'm trying to think of how that could have such an effect. And I'm, I guess maybe if he leaves and tries to take Sayaka with him, Naho will be will fall into despair and Sachiko will really enjoy that, or, or something like that. I don't really see how that can be, but if you're that sure, then I guess... Sachiko hesitantly grabbed the mic. Inumaru, congratulations on reaching the goal. Thank you! As promised? I'll return you to your world now, okay? Just... You just need to pick who's going back with you. Obviously, that will have to be my Sayaka. Come on, Sayaka, let's go! No, I refuse. <laughs> Pardon? Going back with you is absolutely out of the question. What? If I can't go back with Naho, then there's no point in me going back at all. No, wait, Sayaka, weren't you saying you just wanted to go home right away? That you couldn't bear to wait even one more day for your chance? You just don't get it. That has nothing to do with you. And it's just not possible anyway. Like, physically, I just can't bear to do it. What? <laughs> that is pretty funny, at least. It's just as I said, Sachiko, no? Mm-hmm. This is great. I'm loving this. 
So I guess you're going back alone. <laughs> Big brother Inumaru. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're not even going to give him the chance to just choose someone else for the sake of being able to choose someone else? Huh? No, 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 wait, if that's the case, I'd rather stay here. Stop! Ah, what? And with one intense flash of light, Inumaru seemingly blinked out of existence. Thank goodness. Poor Inumaru-kun. Don't worry about him. Besides, would you really have wanted me to leave here without you? No, I'm not saying that, but it definitely seems pretty irrational to have stayed behind, Sayaka. Though that would certainly be what's best for Sayaka. Still, if I told her that, it would only make her mad. Are there no other challengers, then? If not, I'm going to say this particular game is done. Well, it would take guts of steel to volunteer now, after everything that's happened. Looks like Sachiko is actually willing to honor her promise to anyone who reaches the goal. Yeah, that's actually a pretty big surprise to me, too. But kind of along the lines of what Sayaka was saying, there'd be no real point in escaping with just one other person. There's absolutely a point. <laughs> There's absolutely a point. You save your own life and somebody else's. I want to go home, but I want to go home with everyone else. Well, duh, but... <laughs> but to die together? As opposed to have some people survive? Oh, Satoshi, please. So right now, I think our best bet is just to do whatever Sachiko wants from us. Big brother? Oh, man. Sorry, Yuka, but it seems like we might have to go through some scary things for a little bit longer yet. Okay. But we're all going to go home together, I swear it. Okay. Sachiko! Sachiko! Sachiko, are you stepping forward to challenge the race? No, I'm not. I'm stepping forward to take part in the romantic comedy, so please bring back Yoshiki and the others. Oh yeah, we were talking about that, weren't we? Is everybody else okay with that too? <laughs> I was all for it from the very beginning. Admittedly, all the people that were against it are dead. <laughs> if we're doing the romantic comedy, that means Seiko will be brought back for it too, right? Of course, everybody will be. Right, then I'm in too. I'll also do it. <laughs> You're not in this production though, Mayu. But I'll still do it, if it means Shigeni can be brought back. That's right, Yui-sensei is still here. I'll participate as well. We got the teacher, so how about you, Yuka? Uh, I'll do my best too. I don't know what I'm supposed to do exactly, but I'll try. Whew, count me in. Even though... <laughs> All these people. I'll do it. Me too. I don't know what's going on exactly, but if my name comes up at all, you can count me in as well. Wow. Satoshi in the harem. Hold up, dear wife. You mustn't stick your neck out with such a laissez-faire attitude when there's so much danger involved. It's not dangerous. I just want to see a romantic comedy. <laughs> uh, romantic comedy? Meaning my dear wife will have to get close to someone other than myself? In that case, I am opposed. 100% opposed. Ran, look around you. Try to read the mood of the room. Yeah! 
No way, no how. My dear wife is mine and mine alone. <laughs> Big Sis Asa isn't part of the harem though. <laughs> oh, she's not? In that case, I'm fine with it. So no one objects this time, then. It would seem not, Sachiko. In that case, back to starting positions, everyone! Good job today! Oh my goodness. So everybody's back? <laughs> Can we just talk about... Is it... What was it, shift? Yeah. Her face does not look okay. <laughs> there is something very off about that face. Huh? Where am I? Seiko's back, though. So I guess, I mean, I'm down for it. Seiko's great, but Nami immediately grabbed hold of Seiko with all her might, tears streaming down her face. Um, what's up, Nami? Don't you what's up me? You said you were going to reach the goal, you promised! And I thought you'd been lost again, and it was all my fault, just like before. Wow, this absolutely has got to be the right end. Oh, did I die again? <laughs> this has to be one of my favorite moments. This is probably my favorite moment in the game thus far. Oh, did I die again? Sorry, didn't mean to worry you. <laughs> Such a Seiko thing. Well, you've been brought back, so everything's okay now. Good for you, Nakashima-san. Morishige opened his eyes as well, awakening from what seemed to him like nothing more than a brief fainting spell. Where am I? Shigini! <laughs> What's wrong, Mayu? Nothing. I'm just so happy to have you back, Shigini. To have me back? What was I doing again? I feel as though I've just awoken from quite the nightmare. Yeah, that's all it was. You were having a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. If he remembers anything, he might start to go crazy again. So, best to not mention it. Meanwhile, Naha was looking around frantically as if tallying the crowd. Something wrong, Naho? With everyone going back to starting positions, I thought maybe Inumaru-kun would have returned, but I guess not. He wasn't welcome here anyway. We didn't need him. It's weird to think that if he'd been killed somewhere along the way... Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. It might have actually yielded a better result for him in the end. And I bet even Sayaka would have been sad if Inamaru had died, wouldn't she? Finally, Yoshiki awoke with a start as well, having up till now been lying face down and motionless. Hmm? Is this the auditorium? Yoshiki! That's so funny. <laughs> Sato, she's like the only person excited to see Yoshiki. The heck? Let go of me, you're creeping me out! Yoshiki, are you really alive? I mean, yeah, obviously. Darn it, Kishinama, I didn't need you causing me to worry, too. Literally, first moment living again, and all of a sudden, Ayumi's grilling him. You weren't worried? I don't really understand what happened, but Shinozaki was actually worried about me? Causing a girl concern is so unseemly. Huh? Huh? Who you calling unseemly? You, of course. It's an insult to your name, Sir Knight. What <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about? 
My name's Kishinama. I know it's got Kishi in it, but I ain't no knight. Wait, something's coming back to me. Oh my, have you remembered our time together? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? And don't put it like that. People get the wrong idea. Wait, they know each other? <laughs> time together? That does sound suspicious. I mean, he's like, I'm gonna give Yoshiki all the crap. I'm gonna hate on him. I'm gonna be all over Satoshi. But as soon as another girl starts to like Yoshiki or even imply a little bit of sexual tension there, I mean, he's like, hold up a second, that's my Yoshiki. <laughs> Does that mean Kishinama knows this cute girl? <laughs> Honestly, I don't feel bad for you at all, I mean, you know. <laughs> Has something about me caught your attention, Shinozaki? Huh? Oh, uh, no, it's nothing. Wait, how does she know my name? What's going on here? Does this mean both Kishinomakun and I have met this girl before? Very odd. As you can see, I stayed true to my word and brought everybody back. Yeah, and now it's our turn to keep our word. <laughs> We're going to show you <laughs> the best our romantic comedy we can muster. Following your script to a T. We'll make sure you never forget our performance. He was clearly just saying inspirational things out of desperation, hoping beyond hope not to anger Sachiko again. Are you are you ready, everyone? Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> the enthusiasm in this room seems a little lacking compared to yours, Satoshi. Yeah, it kind of does. There was a slight bit of stain, but we'll do it the day after tomorrow, five in the air, which Satoshi hoped Sachiko would notice. Oh my goodness, this chapter needs to end. <laughs> you hear that, Sachiko? Isn't that great? Sachiko! Uh huh, I'm. Super duper looking forward to the show. I want you to show me all the romantic comedy tropes. As she spoke these words, it was like the momentary good humor that had been recovered was being painted over in the darkest black. Something was very off. There we go. That's the clear end. Shame upon the battlefield. I understand why it's called shame upon the battlefield now. Number two, Stranger in the Spotlight is now available in the chapter select. Okay, so that is our next goal, I guess, um, is chapter two, uh, where we're actually going to do the romantic comedy. I'm, I'm surprised that despite introducing the romantic comedy play so early on in the game, it took all, all of an entire chapter to get through to actually, you know, playing it or, you know, participating in it. But it was an interesting chapter. Um, this episode has gone on for quite a bit, so we will definitely not be doing too much more. However, I will say that I'm going to try to get all the other endings. Let's let's take a look. Is there a brief? There's probably an ending list, right? Is it under options or is it under bonus? Ending list. Okay. So hysteric birthday, and then so there are two more wrong endings we could have gotten. Uh, presumably. There was the decision with Seiko, and there was something probably a little bit earlier, or one of the different decisions with Seiko leads to another branching decision point. So in the next episode, we'll get both of the other wrong ends for chapter one. Maybe I'll make it like a little side episode, or maybe I'll just throw it into the next episode before we start chapter two, and we'll see. Um, I know I've done like extra episode or like extra endings um, specific episodes after each chapter in previous Corpse Party games, but I don't know if that's what I'll do this time around. Uh, this right end took a long time. <laughs> it was like a good half hour. I was like, is this the right end? Is this the wrong end? I thought it was going to be another wrong end because both Morishige and Kishinoma died, but, but it turns out I was wrong. 
Um, overall, I mean, it was it was fun. It's a playful environment. It's definitely more silly than the usual Corpse Party games, though it clearly has those moments where it's like death, you know. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it was funny, uh, and I guess I'm I'm curious to see what the two wrong end chapters are, and then of course chapter two, whatever is going on with this play, I know, you know, even though we haven't played the game yet. It's not going to go as planned. It's not going to go as everybody's expecting. It's all the romantic comedy love tropes or whatever, but, like, what are those to Sachiko? They're going to follow her script to a T? We know what Sachiko's into. It's not going to be a basic, ro like, rom-com, right? So, it should be pretty interesting. But, until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.